King Charles cut into the grass there looks so weird. Look at the tin. That's really cute and all the little moments from the day. Brilliant. Definitely a showstopper, but the room was absolutely stunning. I cannot believe it is the coronation weekend for you guys and I thought let's do another little royal video with a sprinkle or a heavy dash of fashion. I'm outside Kensington Palace here on a slightly dreary London day. My gosh guys we're not going to have a spring let's just fast forward to summer. Um, but yes I'm going to go and see the Crown to Couture or Couture to Crown whatever it's called exhibition here at Kensington Palace. My ticket was £25. Um, yeah I'm a little early but I'm going to show you the sunken garden. Now even though it is only 10 degrees I have got um, um, this coated trench coat that I got from Zara and I'm really happy with it. Also, I have to say, I've had so many compliments since I bought these earrings to sort my hair out. These are from Cos and these were £35. I will link them below. Crown to Couture, that's the one. Um, I only booked it a couple of days ago. But yes, let's have a quick look in here. And I do have to quickly say I'm going to link at the end. Um, I came here, I want to say it was a couple of years ago now. I think it was during a lockdown. They had the exhibition that showed Princess Diana's wedding dress. Um, it was on an old camera, so bear with, with the quality. Um, but a lot of people have enjoyed that recently. This little bit is free to get into and I would say come and have a look. But you have these cute, beautiful I should say, arches and then you have the sunken garden which I'm sure if you're watching this you will recognise from the news and you have got a statue, I'll try and zoom in in a second, of Diana and three random children. Oh, but yeah, the grass is looking stunning, very nice. Now that is the iPhone 13 <laughs> zoom, I'm not going to zoom in anymore. But yeah, Diana, Princess of Wales, the statue. I said last time I vlogged here, what do you think? Are you a fan? I mean, oh gosh, it's kind of aged badly. It looks like she's crying white spirit or something. <laughs> I know it's the nature of the material. I just overheard someone say, looks like she's been in battle. Look at her face. But anyway, I still think it is a beautiful position uh, that that statue is in. I think the water is absolutely gorgeous and yeah hopefully if you come in later spring into summer all of these uh, little tunnels will be covered over yeah it will probably look a little bit more picturesque maybe if you're coming but it's a really nice little yeah freebie you can just have a, a walk around the loop and you can go in the gift shop if you want you don't have to pay to go into kensington palace you can just have a look oh look at that and you know me, if there's an afternoon tea, I will show you, but they have got Kensington Palace Pavilion here. They do have a menu, right, let me zoom in. Um, I feel like the afternoon teas are getting a bit out of hand with the price, 46 pounds. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm sure it's very, very nice. And then a few bits from the lunch as well, just so you get a bit of a gut feel. That's proper like restaurant prices here. And it looks like quite a nice little setting out here. It's a nice setting, It's, I mean, it's giving, wedding vibes but yeah i think with afternoon tea i always get asked i think just set your budget whether it's 25 pounds whether it's 100 pounds and stick to it um you've maybe watched some of my other videos you can spend a fortune in afternoon tea but at the end of the day I, I, they're nice but it depends who you go with it doesn't really matter how much you spend i think is what i've realized but anyway stop waffling about food look at this garden these flowers are stunning oh and the sun i feel like the sun's trying to come out Yeah, there's a gift shop down there which you can go into and I always think having lunch down there is quite nice. You can buy food in there like sandwiches and stuff. I think when slots are like half an hour, everyone's probably at least 10 minutes early, right? So I might wait till like 10 past. I don't know. But let me show you the beautiful gates. I think a lot of people think you have to pay to even come into this area, especially the sunken garden up there. Um, but yeah, if you're walking by, I definitely recommend having a quick look. Look at the golden gates. Absolutely. Stunning. I'm really impressed with the grass and also there's so many people running. It's making me feel very lazy. I'm sure you're aware, but yes, this is probably well known. I guess that visual there um, because obviously Lady Princess Diana, uh, Diana Princess of Wales, I should say, used to live here. And as we pan over, who still lives here now? Um, Kate and Wills. I know the princess and princess of Wales. I think being a Brit, I think we're just so used to calling them like William and Catherine. So yeah. And just to, you know, uh, to note even, £25 was be-all and end-all ticket.
then that is just the entry like you can't pay just to see the palace and then the exhibition is separate because i think the exhibition is fully integrated into the palace um if you did come to see the princess diana's wedding dress exhibition thing um actually walking past the orangery looks like it's going through a bit of a makeover and construction so might be why um yeah i guess it'll be a load of mannequins inside i did actually um go on youtube and instagram i was searching all reels i mean who uses uses instagram reels i can't stand them um but anyway i I couldn't really find much on this. Um, you can take photos. I did pre-check with them. They're like cool with me doing this. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure what to expect. There's a little leaflet that you can pick up. It says, I hope you're dressed appropriately. Oh gosh, no, my outfit is not <laughs> the height of couture. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so a couple of things, but you do obviously get access to the jewel room, which is very nice. I remember it last time and through um, to Queen Victoria, a royal childhood, and it goes through all the different bedrooms and things like that. Um, but yeah, this is where we are. Queensway and High Street Kensington are very near. We're just waiting to go through. Bag check. And like the last time I came here, I'm probably gonna do a voiceover. I'll see. Might be a bit awkwardly quiet in there. Oh, look at the flowers, very nice. <laughs> Right, the queue looked massive, but I literally only took 10 minutes. So don't get put off if you see a big queue. We do have the gift shop at the end. I heard some people talking about coronation products, but the route starts this way. I said this last time I was here, look at this wallpaper by the bathroom. This is absolutely amazing. Look at that. It's so cool. Okay, BBC voiceover Hannah here. <laughs> the exhibition starts upstairs and it looked like they were fully using all areas of the palace last time I came here. The upstairs was a bit sparse, uh, but I really like these fun fashion illustrations along the corridor. I felt like I was going to a wedding, uh, but I adored this entrance. Look at the black and white tiles on the floor and then it like goes up into the dress. And this was the first section. It was all about the red carpet in general. They had this beautiful uh, Givenchy dress worn by Audrey Hepburn in, I think it was 1954 when she won an Oscar. Oh my gosh, how tiny was her waist? <laughs> Gorgeous lace. And through the exhibition, they had these clear themes with fun nods to the history of getting glammed up. And one of the examples was the Met Gala, which is like a fancy uh, charity fashion ball in New York. It's a big deal for Vogue and Anna Wintour. She's in charge of it. And it starts with what lies beneath basically an underwear section. This was super fun to see, both some of the really old archive pieces from the early kind of 1700s and then through to today. I am sure Kris Jenner was very happy that Kim Kardashian's underwear has made it into the palace. Comment below, <laughs> what do you think? Um, but I love these fun old pictures of ladies getting dressed and kind of wish there was more of them actually. And then this corset from Dita Von Thies, the American burlesque dance and model. Then Kendall Jenner's dress from 2021 had a big moment here. It was inspired by Audrey Hepburn's time with Givenchy and was based on a gown from My Fair Lady. And all of the dresses had these info cards. I won't read them all out for you, but it's just nice to read uh, some of the info. But yes, there were some royal court outfits and this wall of amazing accessories, which I loved, including the Judith Lieber bags. They're so sparkly ones. Um, but there are lifts and full access for guests, by the way. I nearly drove down these stairs. But I'm going to be honest with you, I love a celeb. I read Daily Mail, um, but I didn't know who quite a lot of the influencers were. They referred to them a lot as influencers. Uh, so instead, I just enjoyed the architecture and the fashion side of things. And then heading up the grand staircase to the King's State Apartments, you might recognize these. These famous paintings are the work of William Kent in 1724, giving you some facts in this vlog, uh, with wood paneled, added later. And he used this like optical illusion way of painting. He has 45 members of the court of George the First featured, which is quite impressive. And then I love this dress, although I do think it should have been the Rihanna yellow dress. I'll insert a picture. It was busy, also very dark. I've tried my best to edit this footage and lighten it. Uh, this Oscar de la Renta dress for Billie Eilish was lovely, uh, but I think this 
the spectacular King's Gallery, which is this red room we're in, was a little bit hidden and I actually thought it was fantastic. It was transformed in 1725 for King George I. And this Gothic dress from Christian Siriano, I think I'm saying that right, was worn honestly by an actress who was in Derry Girls, I don't really know who she was. Um, I do think some of the famous card callouts uh, were not as important as the room or the designers. This was worn by Timothy Chalamet, this Tom Ford suit, that gold one. He's a great actor, can't wait for June too, but um, I was more interested in the room, to be honest with you. And there were quite a few dresses from Jeremy Scott for Moschino, and that pinstripe was Daniel Roseberry. And then this green piece was worn by Lady Gaga to the MTV Awards. I do think some of the dresses were a little bit random, um, like that dress isn't really that big of a deal, um, I would say. Um, but one of the most famous ones for Versace was for Lake Lively's beautiful dress uh, from the Met Gala last year that transformed down the stairs. I think it would have been nice if they displayed it on some steps so you could see the back of it. And then Ryan Reynolds had a uh, Ralph Lauren suit. Um, and yeah, the physical space I think was a little bit tricky for them to display and it was really, really dark in there. This dress was from Tom Brown for the singer Lizzo. Quite a few people around me were like, who's that? It looks awful. Um, I don't know, what do you think? And then there was a little section on Georgian influencers. I kind of hate that they kept referring everything to influencers in this. They were tr clearly trying to link it to the Royals. Greta Thunberg came up on that screen, so I left. Not for me. This was a lovely section, gossip, glamour and gambling. And this Jeremy Scott for Moschino chandelier dress by worn by Katy Perry was brilliant. Definitely a showstopper, but the room was absolutely stunning uh, where Queen Charlotte used to entertain. The staff were also telling stories about the room and how servants would put a pan under your dress if you needed a toilet, because that was more polite than leaving. My gosh. And look, King Charles cut into the grass there. It looks so weird instead of seeing ER assuming flowers will be added. Then politics, fashion and power. Lots of uh, Vivian Westwood statement prints on dresses and the famous pride suit from uh, Caroline Herrera. It was really busy in here. I kind of struggled to, to kind of get, get, get my way in. Um, but yeah, it was nice to kind of see things a little bit closer up in this room. It was really well lit. There we go, there's that stunning suit. And then we went into the Capula room, which I think I'm saying right, which blew everything else away, guys. They had it beautifully lit. And aside from this exhibition, in the middle is this musical clock surrounded by, it's a mix of Georgian and Stuart design. Another, another William Kent number. He was obviously a very great designer. Um, but Googling it, sadly, the clock doesn't work anymore, which is sad, but it still looks amazing. They did have a few bits from the archive again. Um, I do think the royal aspect was really lacking at this point. Um, yeah, I think they probably should have added a bit more in. Um, and on this gorgeous dress, I personally loved these Vivian Westwood shoes at the bottom. They did have another display, kind of random, Nikes really. Um, but the ceiling, honestly, was just incredible and I didn't really care too much about the footwear by the end of it. And did you know you can hire all of these rooms for a wedding? Wow. Now, this is inside the throne room. This was kind of marketed as the key iconic dress uh, by Peter Dundas for Beyonce that she wore at the Grammys in 2017. It's all about the symbolism of the African god of fertility, beauty and love because she was pregnant at the time. Um, I'm going to be honest, I think Kensington Palace should be preserving the importance of these rooms. I didn't like how it was displayed, they, where she was technically stood in front of the beef eaters. I thought that was a little bit rude, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being dramatic. What do you think? Then moving on to the Queen's galleries. This is great to see they had actually put some stuff in here because last time I came it was really empty. Um, and this is all about the after party. But saying that, they then had some kind of random dresses, like one worn by Billy Piper. It was a Vivian Westwood, but I just think that some things weren't really worthy of being in here. I think if you love fashion, you'll enjoy it. But looking back, there were so many Met Gala dresses that weren't in this display. Um, I think I would really like them to have added more royal outfits in from maybe the last hundred years. There wasn't anything. Um, so maybe, maybe even, you know, that bright green outfit that the Queen Elizabeth wore, um, you know, on the last balcony, you know, um, kind of goodbye. Surely they must have something that Diana wore that was couture, or maybe something Catherine's worn. So it did feel like the crown to couture theme was a little bit thin. 
Saying that, this is brilliant though, I absolutely loved it, but it did feel more like an American exhibition in the palace uh, with some, you know, 1700 bits. You couldn't actually take photos of quite a lot of the royal bits, um, so there was a little bit more that I'm showing. I love those cushions, by the way. I think you could get them in the, um, the gift store, which I will show you. Um, yeah, and then headed upstairs um, to the next section, which was the Queen Victoria's apartments. The walkthrough of her life being a child through to being on the throne. Now, this is always here, by the way, guys, and if you've seen any previous vlogs, I've shown this before. They had this little palace mock-up, which was really sweet. I do think there's less stuff in here than last time, or maybe it just doesn't feel like a lot versus the rest of the tour. I'd love them maybe to add some easels in with some more pictures and just a little bit more depth to this part. You go through her playroom, you see some of her toys and little knickknacks, um, and yeah, they, I'm sure they won't mind me showing, but you could try on some of the outfits as well. Um, yeah, the study room was a little bit boring, I'm not gonna lie. Look at this, there's a chest and you can try things on. Isn't that cool? Um, but yeah, the features of the room, I think were really interesting and nice to see. And um, then you go through to, it's called the birthday ball or the birthday ballroom in a second. And they had another room. Do you see what I mean? It's a little sparse. Um, and there's not many cards to read information on. I feel like I'm being negative, but I guess after the exhibition, this seems a little bit lackluster. But yes, the birthday ballroom, here we go. Um, I love these little spinning dancers. I thought they were so cute. I remember them last time. Um, and then you do go through to the room where she was born, uh, which is very exciting. And it does have a little bit of information about the future queen. Um, and she was born in 1819, if you're wondering. Try and remember that for the pub quiz. Uh, but yes, she was then later crowned, not coronated. My gosh, the amount of abuse and horrific comments I've had on my coronation vlog. Guys, I said uh, Charles was being coronated. And people were not happy with me. I'm not gonna apologize because I just made a mistake. Yeah, it's crowned, not coronated. I'm aware of that, calm down. Please stop sending me abuse. Um, but yeah, and then in this last room, yeah, again, the staff were fantastic telling stories of the queen being crowned, not coronated. And yeah, this was the final room of the tour. And you could stay here for hours if you wanted to. Right, you've got normal me back now. <laughs> Let's have a look in the gift shop. I'm gonna quickly focus on the coronation stuff. We've got some Darjeeling tea, 30, oh, sachets. Aren't they called tea bags? Um, how much are these? I dread to think. I think the stuff in here is quite steep, 18 pounds. The same with Fortnum Mason, a uh, little coronation decoration there for £30. I don't know why I sang that, um, but this cute little plate in a box, as you can see, uh, I'm assuming, yeah, that's the £75 one. A mug for £38. Yeah, the prices is pretty actually in, in line with Fortnum Mason. The packaging's really nice. Oh, and some fancy crystal that is engraved. Um, how much is it? How much is it? £60. Oh, that's really sweet, isn't it? And then they have got some merch for Kensington Palace. I don't think I showed any of this last time, or maybe I couldn't film it now, I can't remember. Um, so something like that is 15 pounds. I do like the watercolor range that they've got here. And we do love an ornament, although it looks like it's printed a bit wonky. Um, but if you are not wanting to spend that much for five pounds, there you go, a little wooden spoon. Now this is a really nice bag. A lot of places will just print like wax something on here, like a transfer print, but that's really nice. Um, it's very thin. I do like that little tab. It's not made very well, but um, how much is that? 18, that's not too bad. I think that's pretty spot on actually. And um, for the pin people out there, can you see that? That's quite sweet actually. Oh, three pounds, is that it? Nah, that should be, that, I think that should be six pounds. I know people will roll their eyes at me. I haven't seen a thimble in a while. Um, how much is a thimble? 6.50. That doesn't make any sense. But yes, there we go. How much is a tea towel? It's not going to be very absorbent. It's a bit coated. Uh, 10 pounds, although I do like the ones from Fortnum Mason, which are 13. For 30 pounds, you can get a big tea and biscuit selection. There's no picture on the bottom, but I do like this Royal Crystal stuff that they've got. That's really nice. And um, it says that they do sell it all online as well. Apologies if it doesn't ship to your country. And then they've got all the standard ranges as well. And I don't remember this last time either, the Sunken Garden. I don't think this was here. So you have got quite a fair bit of Diana merch, um, if you can call it that. Um, so for £20, you get this little coin, which is quite a nice little keepsake. 
a little bag for life there, um, which is 18, 19 pounds. And yeah, this little frame, that's 28 pounds if you are interested. And um, some little china things as well, which is really nice. I'm assuming the pricing is probably the same. Let me scoot onto this trinket. 28 pounds, yeah, so how much is a little plate? We're getting there guys, 30 pounds, just so I can give you a bit of pricing um, if you wanna buy any of the Diana bits. Oh, I quite like that. Um, what branding have we got? I kind of wish it had like a little label on, do you know what I mean? That would be quite nice. Same with the, the apron, just a little bit of something, um, but we have got a little bag for life there. Kensington Palace and sparkly, sparkly gold print. How much is that? £10. They're all about the same, these places now. Oh gosh, there's even more. What have we got here? I guess it's a bit more playful. King Charles III. Oh, that's a really nice soft bag. How much is that? £23. Yeah, that's probably quite a tricky one to make. What have we got? Some biscuits there for £15. And what is this? Some tea, I'm assuming. Sorry, I'm not showing the tin, but look at the tin. That's really cute and all the little moments from the day. Clotted cream fudge, sorry, 15 pounds. That's really nice because you could probably whack tea bags in that after and it's got a little label as a gift. I do like this print that they've created. What's this? Very nice. Awesome biscuits, ginger biscuits and triple chocolate chip biscuits for 20 pounds. I guess you're paying for the tin really, aren't you, on these things? And as I move across the last few bits, playing cards. Oh, wow. I've not seen anything like that. And then this tea towel, which is way better than the other one. 100% um, cotton, lovely jubbly, 15 pounds. Yeah, that's nice. And then, should we finish with a spoon? Let's finish with a spoon. Gold plated spoon for 30 pounds. 13 pounds, oh, I think that's quite reasonable. It's a bit fancy, isn't it, having your brew? But it is getting busy, because it's lunchtime. Wait, hold on, just a couple more things, one second. The coin, oh, that looks a bit rubbish, I don't like that. They've done a poor job on that, four quid. Um, but I do like these pens. I'm assuming these are free here all the time. Six pounds, Kensington Palace. I think these had, they had these at Buckingham Palace. Um, I don't know how much a pencil is, probably a few quid. And they've got different toppers. Can I get it in focus? Not quite. Gold carriage. And there is a whole section for the um, exhibition that we went and saw. So you can probably buy some postcards and yeah, things like that. A little magazine, keepsake. I'm not gonna lie guys, I think I've shown enough merch. <laughs> wow, I was in there for just over two hours. Um, I definitely a lot longer in there. I think if you haven't been to Kensington Palace before, um, I did whiz through those other rooms. Um, the jewellery room I couldn't film in, so apologies for that. But yeah, the kind of history of Victoria and her growing up from like a, being born um, through to being married, um, that was really interesting. I have seen it before, so I did show you a very very quick version of it but if you are coming allow i'd say at least two two and a half hours um obviously if you're into fashion i would say at the moment if you're not into fashion and you want to come to kensington palace i don't think it's worth it because i went through everything and as you saw i'd say 80 percent of it is that exhibition now um I probably have already said in the voiceover, I think there's a little bit too much emphasis on influencers and celebrities, but I guess they're trying to like modernise it. I have an issue with Beyonce being put on the throne like that, but hey, uh, just my personal opinion. But if you are a fashion fan, definitely would recommend it and it is worth £25, I think. But with that lovely view, it is time for me to head on. I also have a feeling, I think this video would have taken me, I'm going to say six, if not seven hours to edit based on all the number of clips I've got. I think I've got about 300 clips to do, audio levels to fix and a voiceover. So if you have enjoyed it, please do give this video a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see more. I'm not sure what next week could be. It'd probably be something shopping related. Um, I might regret saying this, but I'm probably gonna be taking a break from YouTube soon um, just to have some time off, maybe for the summer, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, show some love with a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. But I will see you next Friday at 6 p.m. Enjoy the coronation weekend, or if you're watching this in the future, I hope it went well. Um, if you're not a royalist, you're probably not watching this. But anyway, um, yeah, have a good one. Bye, guys.